I just need you to understand, like God is not impressed because you got dressed and you came here. He's not impressed that you're here. He's not, he's not excited about the fact that you're here. He's only excited if you come and you get what you're supposed to get. And when you leave, you're brand new. I've never taken my car to get the oil changed at Cadillac and didn't expect I went to go get the oil change. I didn't just go to let them see the car. I've never taken my car to the dealer just to see. Oh, <laughs> uh, somebody, I try, I'm trying to make it plain. I've never taken my car to the dealership just so they can look at what they already built. Every time I take it there, it's because something's wrong and I need them to fix it. When you go to God, he does not need to see who you are. He made you. You're going to God because something ain't working and something ain't right. And I need help. I, can you fix it? And I promise y'all, Jeremiah 29, 11, he's so ready to fix it because he's so ready for you to get back on the road. Hey, man, I'm going to say that one more time. God is so ready to fix you because he wants you to get back on the road and he wants you to perform the way you were designed to perform. So when I picked up my Cadillac, I'll be real with y'all, put it on the freeway and gunned it to see if it's all right. <laughs> I'm like, let's say I want to see a bit. You know what I'm saying? I want to see if I hear some noise again. I want to see if the pickup, I want to see if it do what it's supposed to do. Are y'all hearing what I'm telling you? And so Jeremiah 29, 11, the Bible says, for I know, not I guess, I think, I know the plans that I have for you. So I want you to do me a favor with the piece of paper you have. I want you to, you go into the dealer right now. And I want you to talk to the, I want you to talk to your maker. And I want you to say, this is where I think I need the move, the needle to be moved. Amen. Yeah, maybe that may not be it, but start with what you think it is. Amen. I don't know cars, but I'm like, Jamie was like, what's up? He was like, I don't know, bro, but it's knocking. He from, I don't know. But I also know it can't be what I think it is because it's got oil in it and I changed the oil. Hey Amen. It can't be that. Hey Amen. So whatever it is, it's on them. It's not on me. Are you listening to what I'm telling you? I'm telling you that you come into this world with some stuff and God already know what you come with and he going to fix it. Hey Amen. And if he does not fix it, Paul, Paul said three times he came to the Lord and told the Lord to remove it. And God said, I'm not removing it. We're going to let you hold on to it because I need to keep you close to me. And that's going to keep you coming close to me. Amen. So there's some things you're going to take to the dealer. And he, he made the God may decide that we're not going to fix it, but we're going to, we, I'm going to work with you with it. Amen. Come on. Praise God. Amen. So some stuff he just going to get rid of for you. Amen. Some stuff you just going to go cold turkey and some other stuff that it may not be gotten rid of, but God's like, I'm going to show you how to make that bring us closer together. So I want you to think right now before we get started. What do you need to move the needle to be moved right now? What part of your life do you need to move? God, I just, can you do something in this area? Can you do something in that area? Hey Amen. I'm going to take you to the world. I'm so excited. Like, I'm like, I'm, I'm not only does God hold me accountable to the word, Didi hold me accountable to the word. Hey Amen. So I don't even get to come in here. Y'all might be thinking I'm just coming in here just a couple minutes before I got in here. And I just, I promise you, I did. I promise you, I've been studying the word. I've been asking God, God, what do they need so they don't just have church, but they, whatever. I don't care if they're in school, I want them to be blessed. I don't care if they're playing sports, I want them to be blessed. I don't care in their health, I want them to be blessed. I want them to look at their bank account and be blessed. Lord, I'm not up here just talking. I want their relationships to be blessed, Lord. I, everything they touch, I want it to be blessed. Why? Because that's what you would have for us. And as your, as your under shepherd at APOC, Lord, for those of you who are watching, for those of you who are here, we're not just coming to be coming. When you leave, you need to be changed. You need to be, you need to be more of the model that God created than you were last week. Praise God. I'm going to say that one more time. You need to be more of the model that God created. Amen. So you can perform in the way he called you to perform. So your life can look like what you dream of. And so there's an area of your life that is not what you think it should be. Do not get frustrated. Do not give up. Do not give in. Just go to the maker. Praise God. Amen. All right. So I, I, I was studying the word and I promise y'all, I don't know if any of y'all ever had this experience, but you can read a chapter over and over and over again. And God keeps showing you something different. 
And so God showed me something today to help us move the needle in our lives and to continuously move the needle. Amen. He showed me something. Amen. So, so I, I don't, if you don't mind, if you could just write your name down on the piece of paper on the phone, I want you to write your name down. You know what God told me? God said, Eric, as long as you're operating, amen, in the spirit and not in the natural, you're going to be good. It's when you're in the spirit and then you're in the natural. And when you're in the natural, then you're back in the spirit. God said, if you can just stay in the spirit, you're going to be good. Hallelujah. If you could be the version of you that I created, everything is going to be good. Son, the problem is when you go back and forth and back and forth and back and forth. Amen. And sometimes in my own personal life, I promise y'all, if I'm in the spirit 80% and then I go into the flesh for 20, I'd be trying to justify it. Like, God, come on, God, I'm 80%, 90% in the spirit. He like, well, it's worse for you then, because if you're 90% in the spirit, that 10% is going to hurt you. Somebody who's 60, 40, they 60% in the flesh and 40% in the spirit, like, they ain't going to see a movement like that. But son, if you stay in the spirit and then you go in the flesh, it's going to be worse for you because you're not used to being in the... It's like anybody ever stopped eating pork for a long period of time and then you start eating it again? And you remember what happened when you... Anybody stop eating chocolate and you remember what happened when you stopped eating chocolate, then you went back to it. Like there's certain things that if you leave and go back to it, your body responds different when you go back to it. And so God is saying when you're in the spirit and then you go in the flesh, it like it has a reaction. And so so what God is saying to us is that if we would stay in the spirit, if we would stay in the person that he created, Man, we're going to be blessed. So I want to show you something that God showed me. Blew my mind. I, 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 Rodney, if you can, if, if, can you bring this uh, trash can to me and then that table? Just write your name down if you don't mind. If you don't mind, if you can write a couple characteristics down of who you are and how great you are when you're in the spirit, right? Just want to show y'all something real quick. We're going, we just, I just want to teach today if y'all don't mind. Amen. God gave me a word. I just want to teach. Amen. If you don't mind. Amen. I just want you to write down like some of your positive characteristics when you're in the spirit. I want you to write that down. Please, put it in your phone. Don't just stare. Like, follow instructions. Amen. Follow instructions. Do what I'm asking you to do. God's about to do something in your life. Amen. So, praise God. So, so, so God brought Job 3 and 25 to me, right? He said, for the thing which I greatly feared has come upon me. I said, what? God brought me this this week. God said, you, we gotta, we gotta stop going in the spirit, out the spirit, right? So, so Job said, for the thing which I greatly, not just fear, what kind of fear was it? Come on, talk to me. What kind of fear was it? That greatly feared, he said, has come upon me. And that which I was afraid of has come unto me. I said, man, God, I mean, I want y'all to get this. I want y'all to stay like, like, like when you in the spirit, then you go in the flesh. God is like, do me a favor. Like the plans that I have for you do not include you running my place sometime. Then you run in your own play. It don't include that. And so everything that's not a part of my play, you need to get it out your system and you just need to run my play for I know the plans that I have for you. And there are those of us in this room. We have run a play that's not God's play. And we're asking ourselves, how in the world did I get here? You got here because fear. Right? Or whatever your thing is. But I want to show you. God showed me. God told me that before this thing even happened to Job, Job was thinking about it. Job was thinking about the thing that happened to him before. Every time we read about what happened to Job, we like, man, how in the world? But the Bible says that before his kids got killed, he was thinking about it. Before he lost all his stuff, he was thinking about it. All the tragedy that came upon him, he didn't say he was shocked by none of it. He didn't say he was surprised by none of it. He said, for the thing which I greatly feared has come upon me, which means that even though the Lord was blessing him, there was a part of his life that was thinking about what could happen and what wasn't already happening. And, 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 and even though Job was a man that feared God, that, that was a man after God's own heart. Job, Job was the one. The Bible says that while Job was blessed in the way that he was blessed, that there was a period of time in his life where he was reflecting on something bad was going to happen. 
Why Job was probably one of the best blessed people we've ever read about in the Bible. And why he was so blessed, there were times throughout the day that he was saying, man, I know the Lord has blessed me, but this going to happen and this going to happen and this going to happen and that's going to happen. Come on, I just want to teach today. We talking about Job, y'all. We talking about that somebody in the Bible that God told Satan, yeah, you can tempt my servant. You good. Amen. But the very thing that happened to Job was not a, a coincidence. Amen. It was something that he had been thinking about. And why was he thinking about it? Because Satan told him to think about it. Praise God. We got to stop going in and out the spirit, y'all. And so Job said, my, my children died one after the next. That didn't shock me. I thought that, that I, I feared that that was going to happen. Me losing all my stuff, even though the Lord had blessed him. There are those of us who are blessed and we can't even enjoy the blessing because we're constantly thinking about what's going to happen to the blessing at some point. And now the thing that you feared, you didn't brought it on to yourself because you feared it. You allowed it to actually happen. I want to read it one more time. I want to make sure we're clear. I want to move the needle today. So part of moving the needle is moving the stuff in our lives that are not a part of God's play. God said, run my play. I told you that if I take care of the spirit, I'm going to take care of you. So if I told you I'm going to take care of you, at what point are you worried about me not taking care of you? Like, why are you worried about that? And you're worried about that because who, who told you that? Adam, you naked. Eve, you naked. That's not even a word in my, that's not a word in my godly vocabulary. Where you get that from? What? You naked? Naked, naked is not a spiritual term. Naked is not a spiritual construct. Now, I already know. You don't think I know, but I know. But I'm going to ask you because I'm trying to help you. But I'm going to ask you a question. The word naked, who told you you were naked? I never used the word naked around you. I never said naked. I never explained naked to you. Naked is not a spiritual context. Naked is something that happens when you're in the flesh. Who told you you was naked? Where you get that from? Where, where's that vocabulary come from? Oh, you've been, you've been, you've been entertaining the devil. So in the midst of Job being blessed, he was still entertaining the, the devil because he said, for the thing which I not just feared, he said, I greatly feared it, which means what? He was thinking about it constantly. It was bothering him. He was worried about it. He said, now that thing has come upon me. Huh? That thing you're thinking about in your marriage, that thing you're thinking about in your business, that thing you're thinking about in your health, you, that's not a part of God's vocabulary. Let that stuff go. He said, and, and, and that which I was afraid of is, is, is come upon me now. I always knew this was going to happen. I knew I was going to, I knew I was going to get that call about my kids. I knew this business thing, as dope as it was, I knew it wasn't going to last forever. I knew it. I knew my body. I knew I was healthy. You ever been healthy, Rodney? You healthy, and then you like feel something. You like, oh, man, oh, man. If Job was like, man, oh, I'm going to have and got, nothing that happened to Job, as terrible as it was, what was a surprise to Job. He said, I feared all of that, and everything I feared has come on me. Watch this next one. I want to show you something. God, 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 God told me this is how you're going to move the needle in your life. For God have not given us the spirit of fear. God said that Job, I ain't give you that Job. Where that come from? Where that come from? Now watch the term that he used. This is deep. He used this term spirit. God brought into my life today, this week. He said, Eric, you got to be careful. There's some stuff that you do that, like, son, you need to work on that. I used to wonder, Rodney, the difference between weight and sin. I didn't know the difference between the two. Like, you hear uh, uh, all your sins and weights that so easily beset you. I realized that what makes a sin a sin and a weight a weight that a weight is wrong. A weight is a gateway into something. But a sin means that it's in your spirit. 
That's why he said, for I'm not giving you the spirit. So what do I mean by that? When I say spirit, I mean that it's something inside of you. And even though that thing may have happened years and years ago, it's still in you today like it happened today when it happened 10 years ago, 20 years ago. I'll never forget. I'll never forget. Jamie and I was talking. Hey, Amen. Forgive me, Jamie. But Jamie and I was talking in our own space here one day and Jamie was different. And I was like, bro, what's up, bro? I'm like, you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, I know Jamie got that energy. Jamie came in and he had that energy. Now, we did what the Lord called us to do, but he had that same energy. And I was like, Jamie, what's up, bro? He was like, man, this is the season where my sister committed suicide. And I was like, yeah, it's in his spirit. Yeah, it's in his spirit. Hey man, Rodney, the other day, we was going, I was like, Rodney, you good? What's that going on? This is when my mother was murdered or my mother died. Of, was it cancer? I was like, ah, he was like, and it was her birthday. And I was like, ah, that's in his spirit. Oh, come on, talking to somebody today. It's in his spirit. So it don't matter what he doing or what's going on or how blessed he is during that time frame. It's in his spirit. It's in Jamie's spirit. So anytime that see it's in his spirit. And God told me that the reason why some of us cannot move the needle in our lives, because there's some stuff in our spirits that won't let it move it. That's some stuff in your spirit. It's in your spirit. It's deep down within. So every time you try to grow or change, you can't because that thing is in your spirit. And you go, the thing that I fear, it ain't even happened yet. It hadn't even happened to Job. And Job was thinking about it as if it happened. So there are things that have taken place in our lives that is not the fact that it happened that's bad, but it happened and it keeps happening. Because it's still in our spirits. And God told me to tell you today, he told me to tell you today, he told me to tell you today, Rodney, he told me to tell you today that that is some stuff in your spirit. It needs to get out your spirit and go in the trash. So God told me to tell you today, I'm going to show you in the scripture. God told me to tell you today that I don't care how bad it was. I don't care how personal it was to you. I don't care how much you loved him. I don't care what's going on. It's still in your spirit and you can't move forward because it's still in your spirit. And you keep attracting certain things to you because it's in your spirit. And because it's in your spirit, that's why, Job, it's come upon you. You actually, in your fear, brought it to you. Why? Because fear is a spirit. And spirits have power. Oh, I want, I, I want to take, I just, I will say one more time, I'm saying slow. Spirits have power. And that's why it's done in spirit. Because if the devil can do it in spirit, he can keep it in you and keep an attachment to himself to you. Huh? Huh? So there are terms that you use and stuff that you use that refer to the past and you keep talking about it like it's today and some of you got guilt. That's why the Bible says there is no condemnation. It doesn't mean that you should keep doing dirt. It doesn't mean you should keep doing wrong. But what he's saying is no condemnation, meaning that after you bring it to me, you got to put it in the trash. Because if you bring it to me and you don't put it in the trash, it's going to manifest. It's going to reappear. It's going to show itself. So you got to let it go. For those of you with stuff that happened in your teenage years, you haven't let it go yet. And that's why you can't go. Some stuff that happened to you in your twenties, you can't, you're like, why am I still attracting the same person? Cause you got the same spirit. Why am I attracting the same opportunity? Like, why is it that I, I can't never in business take off? Cause you got the same spirit. And God is saying, for I have not given, I have not given you that spirit. All right, so I want to go here before we go there. <laughs> Praise God. Can I just teach, Lisa? I just want to teach for a minute. If I could just teach for a minute. Amen. For those of you who are watching, please do what I'm telling you to do at home. So watch what God told me. God told me that it ain't nothing wrong with your marriage. But what happens is when we get married, we marry one person. But then there are things that happen. And when those things happen, we become a different person. And when we become a different person, the person that married us don't like us. Because they didn't marry that person. 
Huh, come on, come on, come on. When we start doing business together and I'm, and I, and, and the person that I was attracted to, but when you become a different person, I don't like you no more and now I don't want to do business with you no more. God told me to tell you that if we can stay in the spirit and we can run this play, we always going to be good. God told me to tell you that there are many of us, there are things that we've done that was not a part of God's play, but it was a part of fear and fear made you run a different play. Whatever your brand of fear is, when you got that fear, you no longer trust God. You was like, yo, if I don't do this, my marriage, if I don't do this, my business, if I don't do this, my, if I don't do this, my, if I don't do this, my kids, if I don't do this, I, and so now you become controlling. Now you scared something going to happen to them. So it ain't even love no more. You just all on them every day, all day. You got to be in folks' phones. Hey man, you got to put tractors on your kids because you got, and God is saying, let go. What are you doing? I, I got a tractor on them. What are you doing? You ain't got to go through. You ain't got to go through the phone. I got a tractor on him. I got it. I'm going to take care. Of it. Are you listening to what I'm saying? And it does not mean that God is not going to correct us. It don't mean that. It don't mean that we shouldn't care about our kids. It don't mean we shouldn't know where they going. It does not mean that. But it means that we don't do it with fear. Because the fear will make you and act the way that, and your kids like, why are you talk, talking like that? Or why are you doing that? Or why are you in my spell? Like, what's going on? And it's not that you don't love them, but you went from love to fear. God says, just trust. If I told you that, that you was going to be on the basketball squad, the football squad, you was going to run track. If I told you, you, you can't, you can't do 20 more hours of working out to get something that I don't have for you. And you can't underperform to the point that I can't bless you. What I have for you is you. You got to trust me. But in fear, we become a different person and we actually destroy what God is trying to do because we become a different human. If we would just stay ourselves, which is what? Love, power, sound mind. I'm going to say it one more time. If you want to be blessed, amen. You want your marriage to be blessed. You just got to stay in love, power, sound mind. Okay. All right. All right. I'm going to say it one more time. I want to say it one more time. Hey Amen. Whatever it is, there, I've talked to humans who've told me, Pastor, pray for me. I said, what happened? I stopped paying my tithe. Remember we had that conversation, Rodney? Uh, about E, my tithe. I'm like, Rodney, bro, you, what do you, uh, so what happens is you fear, and then you go, I only got so much money, I can't pay my tithe. I'm going to go do this, and you stop running God's play, and now you just spent the tithe money on something else, and now you're not blessed, and like, God, what's up? He said, you stop running my play. My play is my play. I don't care how much money you have. You must operate in love, power, and a sound mind. Fear take, I, you know what? When I used to hear this when I was younger in the spirit, you know the two words that I would hear was love and power. I never even studied sound mind. But do you know as soon as fear comes on you that you lose your sound mind? I just want to help you out. As soon as you are in the spirit of fear, you will no longer have your sound mind. And once you don't have your sound mind, you're not making them sweet sound decisions that you normally make. Now you're in fear and you're making unwise decisions and you say unwise stuff and you feel in an unwise way. And then you say like, I got you. Say this like, I don't even have to make you do anything. All I have to do is make you fearful of the blessings that you currently have and tell you that at some point you're not going to have them, so you got to react. You better hurry up and do something, because if you don't do something, you're about to lose that. And what you don't realize is what you do is actually causing you to lose it. And now you're wondering why you lost it. You lost it because you weren't, you didn't have a sound mind. So you weren't making sound decisions. You weren't doing what the word told you to do. You weren't even being yourself. Praise God. The Bible says in Genesis 41 and 46, and Joseph was 30 years old when he entered into the service of Pharaoh. Hey Amen. let's do our math. Let's do our math. So if I'm not mistaken, he was about 16, 17 years old when he was put in. I'm sorry. Let's start here. I, I was going too far. He was about 16, 17 years old when his brothers tried to kill him. Take his whole life. 
what's going to happen with your dream. Wow, y'all got to watch what I'm saying. God showed me. I never saw this before. At least I saw it, but I didn't see it, see it. I saw it, but I didn't see it, see it. What I saw this time when I read the story of Joseph is that Joseph is one of the few people in the Bible who never switched up. Oh, I know that don't sound deep to you, but I'm going to say it one more time. Joseph is the only person really in the Bible that you're going to study is that when something bad happened to him, he didn't lose his love. His oh, Come on, somebody. Come on, somebody. He, he, didn't, he didn't go into fear. He, he, he didn't go into fear. He stayed. Huh? He didn't jump into fear. He didn't say, my brother's trying to kill me. Let me do something to stop them from trying to kill me. He didn't, he didn't switch up. He was like, all right, y'all can try to kill me if y'all want to. I'm about to stay love, power, sound mind. He never switched up. Read the Bible. Joseph never switched up. His brothers tried to kill him. He never switched up. He always stayed the same. He never changed. He was the servant. He never changed. He was a slave. He listened to me, saints. He went from never have to working. He went from being a supervisor his whole life. He went from being special in his father's eye to being a slave. And he never switched up. He never panicked. He never went. They sold me. I'm, in, I'm a slave now. Let me get an exit strategy. Huh? The problem in your marriage is not your marriage. When you went through a trying time, you came up with an extra strategy. When God told you don't ever have one, he said, what, let, what God put together. Ain't no extra strategy in that. But you're, but you're wondering what happened in your marriage. An extra, you had an extra strategy. And it was your extra strategy that worked. It worked. You had an exit strategy. It worked. You had whatever, whatever your business was and you was doing your business and they told you the economy is and you saw what the economy was doing and you was watching TV and you saw it was crashing and you saw some of your stuff go down and you fear and you made a decision. Job never switched up. He looked at the economy crashing and went, love, power, sound mind. I'm not moving. I'm staying right here. Because anything good going to happen is going to happen here. It ain't going to happen over here. And it ain't going to happen over here. My boys get, you know, they get on me like, E, you prejudice. <laughs> I'm one of the, you know, dudes that originally they never believed in. You know, I was like, if I had a choice as an NFL team, I wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't naturally recruit a black quarterback. My boys used to be mad. Oh, so you think white quarterbacks are, you know, superior to black quarterback? I was like, no, I don't think that. I just think because black quarterbacks can run, they become a running back instead of a quarterback. Like I paid for a quarterback. <laughs> you didn't put up 236. That's what I paid him for. <laughs> I paid the running back to do that. I ain't pay you to do that. So now you got a concussion. Concussion, why? Because you didn't run the play. You ran your own. And for those of you who know anything about football, you really put the lineman in the bad position when you start scrambling all over the place because now you got somebody 300 pounds trying to scramble and now he didn't tore his ACL, his MCL, trying to keep up with you. But some of the white quarterbacks, I'm not saying are superior, but what I'm saying is they can't run. And because they can't run, they don't have the option to try to be a running back. So what they do is go blue 52 on three, hot, hot, and they see the, and they just go. So the same way you ran to try to bop, you get hit, it's hard to get hit when you go. I'm saying Tom Brady has to be the slowest quarterback I've ever seen in my life. My man in his 40s is still playing going to the Super Bowl. Why? Because when it collapsed, he goes. And so everybody out there, now they going outward and then they got to come inward. And by the time they go out and come in, he's already most black quarterbacks. You didn't ran into the guy that's coming towards you. And now he didn't pop you and you don't have the bill to get popped. 
So now you sitting on the bench for three weeks. Why? Because of concussion for protocols. Now we concuss, we got concussions, y'all. Why? Because we keep running when things don't look the way we think they should look. We keep running instead of stepping into God. You didn't made a decision without stepping into God. You ain't stepped into prayer. You ain't stepped into your word. You didn't stepped into your own way. Job ain't never switch. I don't care what you're trying to do. You want to go to the NBA, the NFL, stick, stick with the manufacturer. Stick with him. Stay with him. He made your body. He know what it's capable of doing and what it can't do. He know how to motivate you and get you moving in the way you can. But every time we end something and it don't work the way we want it to work because we self-centered, we ready to run when God is saying, no, 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 no. Just come on. It's go You're not going to play football without some tackles. It's going, it's going to be somebody going to rush you. So watch this. This blew my mind. So if Joseph, if Joseph is 30 years old, then that means we know for a fact that he's gone through at least 13 years of hard struggles and he ain't moved. Go, you go, I, I give you a thousand dollars. You go find a scripture with Joseph in it where Joseph is either thrown in the jail because uh, she lied on him. You go anywhere and, and see him question God like, why you going to let her do me like that? That one, you know, I ain't even do that to her. Why you going to let me go to prison for something I ain't even do? Every time he showed up somewhere, he showed up in love, power, and a sound mind. Where can I serve? This must be a part of the plan. We're looking at the plan when it don't go the way we wanted to. Now we got an attitude. We didn't, we didn't came up with our own plan. Joseph is like, yo, me getting sold into slavery, that must be a part of the plan. Let go. <laughs> Joseph geeked. Joseph like, let's go. What y'all want me to do? Oh, y'all want me to clean up? He was not only cleaning up, y'all. He was considered the best slave of all slaves. He was such a good slave that the owner said, you can have everything but my wife. And she was like, that's what you say. <laughs> when you leave, I'm going to let him know he can have me too. Because my man on another level. Joseph was like, I'm good on that. Oh, either you sleep with me or you're going to jail. He was like, cool, I'm going to jail. That must be a part of the plan. Sign me up. I'm good. That's the part of the plan. Let's go to the next one. We don't need to, I don't need all that. Let's go. I'm going to try to hurry up and finish this. I got three things, so I'm only going to do, do two today. Watch this, y'all. Watch what happened when he followed the plan. 13 years later, after going through all he went through, he did not switch up on God. He knew it was all part of the plan. And Joseph stored up grain in great abundance like the sand of the sea until he ceased to measure it, for it could not be measured. He ran God's play. He ain't never questioned God's play. How you let me get caught? How my brothers, how you gonna let my brothers, that wasn't right. How you gonna let me put them in the hole? How you gonna let me get sold to slavery? How you gonna let her lie? How you gonna put me in prison for that long? Joseph went through all of it like, yo, this must be God's plan. Let's go. Our problem is as soon as it don't look like we think it should look like, as soon as it caused us a little problems, we, wreck, we ghost, we out. Joseph was like, I'm running the play. That's what you told me to do. That's what I'm doing. Nowhere in the Bible will you read other when it's talking about God and revelation and that. And you ain't going to read nowhere else in the Bible where they could not measure it. That's how much. Bro, do you understand how much money you got to have? You understand how successful you got to be that you can't count it? You can't measure it. What kind of, go back to that one. I just want y'all to see it. What kind of math you on? What it means is, I want y'all to see what this is saying. He ceased to measure it for it cannot be measured. Meaning what? That it was no longer, it, it was no longer being produced in the flesh. It was being produced in the spirit. This is what this is saying. So when you get to a spiritual point, you can't measure it. You can't measure the spirit. You can't measure love, power, and a sound mind. You can't measure that. He was so dope and that he stuck with the plan and did what God told him to do. Despite what was going on around him, that now he's so prosperous, you can't even measure it. 
the system that he using is just bringing grain in out of nowhere. Like how in the world is grain being produced on this level? Because it's not being produced in the flesh. When we get to a spiritual realm, we can... Man, I was tripping, man. I promise y'all, I ain't nowhere where I need to be. But the other day, I had to go pick up a prescription for my father, and it was kind of late. And my wife was like, you need to hurry up, because, like, you know, they closed. You know what I'm saying? Pharmacies closed. They closed, closed. They don't stay open. And I was like, all right, I'm just going to feel like being in a rush, but I'm going to get there before I get there. And then my daughter was like, Dad, he, Ma, he going to be all right. Dad's favorite. And I was like, whoa, that's dope. And my daughter who been around me, definitely not perfect, but she like, yo, my daddy got a relationship with God that's not natural. He's favored. I was like, all right, let me go. Went, got there. My, the pharmacist behind the counter was like, E.T., what's up? You remember me? I was like, I ain't gonna lie. I'm old. I don't remember you. He's like, bruh, I was going through pharmacy school when we met and you was hollering at me. And you told me what I needed to do when I did it. And now, bro, I've been here six months. I'm a pharmacist. What do you need, bro? I'm telling you for real, when you start getting the spirit part, it's just all, it's different. You think the flesh, you think you being able to calculate something and you can figure it all out on your own and you got this little system. That's where I promise you, your system might be dope. But wait till you leave your system alone and do it God's way and you ain't got no fear. And listen to me, fear does not, it, it's, I'm not saying what you think I'm saying. When I'm saying fear, I'm not talking about you being able to trust in humans. I'm saying you ain't even worried about humans because you're so worried about what God's going to do. I won't say that one more time because you kind of scared. Of, I don't know what my kids going to be. This don't got nothing to do with your kids. When you trust the God that's got your kids, you don't even have to worry about your kids. <laughs> like you wasting time. You want some, I hope they going to be all right. <laughs> they don't have nothing to do. You ain't got to worry about if they going to be all right or not. You asking if they going to be all right is not a question of them being all right. It's a question that you don't believe he going to do what he said he was going to do. That's your bigger issue is you die, you don't know if he's capable. You like my husband is a, I, I promise you he got him. <laughs> my wife is a, I promise you he got her. My kid, my boss, I promise you he got him. He got the whole world. Either we teach the song when we kids or it's real or it ain't real. He got the whole world in his hand. So your trust ain't in no man. Your trust in that God's going to bless you through whoever like he said he was. So don't you think the last time you got afraid in the decisions you made when you was afraid, I promise you they didn't work out on your behalf. I promise you you didn't come up. <laughs> I promise you you ain't looking at your fear. The, the, I, I promise you you can measure your <laughs> probably going backwards. Good, let's go to the next one. I'm going to get this one to y'all and get out. Do me a favor before you get out of here. Figure out whatever that thing is that's in your spirit. And before you leave today, get that joke out your spirit. So you can go to a whole nother level in your relationship with God and in the world. Does that make sense? So so I don't, I, 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 let's just go here in the middle. And this is our last text for today. And Joseph named his firstborn. Manessa and said it's because God has made me forget all my trouble in all my father's household. <laughs> ah, I gotta do it myself. I thought y'all, I thought I had taught enough that you was gonna catch it. I'm sorry. I thought you was gonna catch it. I apologize. Y'all just dead today, or y'all just really students and paying attention. Huh? I thought you was gonna catch it. Jo the secret to, jo uh, to Joseph's success is that the Bible declares that, go back, I want to show you, the Bible declares, he named his son this, he says, it's because God has made me forget all my trouble. The problem with us, you ain't forgot your trouble. You still thinking about it today like it happened today when it happened years ago. You still think, jo uh, Joseph was so dope. Because Joseph said, I'm not even going to remember my troubles. Joseph, I'm going to run God's play. And if this is a part of God's play, it's a part of God's play. I'm not going to sit here and go, I can't believe my brother sold me like that. I can't believe. He wasn't on that. He 
he 13 years after this is after he has spent 13 years uh, for some this, accused of something that he did not do and he still said I'm not going to remember that your problem is you blessed you're in 2023 but you're still living in 1982 you're still in 82 you're still in 82 then you didn't marry somebody and then that person has to deal with all the hurts that you had to deal with before you married that person. Now they got to get that. And now we wondering in our marriage, like what's going on? What's going on is you treating your spouse like the last two, three people you've been through and because you fear that it's going to come. God said, you got to get that stuff out your system. Why every time I go to school, I can't pass a test. You still got that. I don't know if I could pass a test. You still got that fear in your spirit. I don't know if I'm smart enough. Of course you're not. If you say you're not, my marriage ain't going to make it. Of course it's not. You just decreed it wasn't going to make it. You just said it wasn't going to make it. You're absolutely right. It's not. You, you didn't realize that blessings and trouble are part of God's plan. I want to say it one more time slow. Joseph understood that one don't come without the other. So when the blessings come, you are your authentic self. When the curses come, you switch up and become somebody else. And then you're wondering what happened. What happened was you didn't stay you because you allowed that trouble to make you something that you weren't. And the Bible says, I love you. I'm just going to just give me a minute if you don't mind. The Bible says it is because God has made me forget all my trouble. I'm telling y'all, when you hear people speak or when you see people do certain things, you don't even know what they went through and you could tell they went through something because that's all they talk about. It's the only, it's the only topic on your mind. You can't even talk about the other stuff that's dope about you because all you talk about is your trouble. I'm going to say it one more time so you can get it. I'll never forget. Brian, I'm going to get this one to you. I'll never forget. Years and years ago, my, my God told me, do me a favor. How do you feel about your Didi? I said, God, you know, the, you know, the, the, the difficult, like, you know, how she'd be like a perfectionist, that kind of be. There's no, 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 no. How do you feel about Didi? I said, man, I love her. I wouldn't be where I am without her. He said, so do me a favor. That's all I want you to think about when you think about her every day. Don't ever think about something she said to you that ticked you off. Don't ever think about something she did. Don't forget everything she's ever done that you felt like it wasn't right. And only think about the person. When you talk about her, talk about her in the streets well. When you think about her, think when you preach about her, preach well. There are those of you who are wondering what's going on. You're talking about your mama like that. And that's why you had a relationship you had with your mama. Because you're dogging your mama out. And so now that's, that's, this is what's happening to you. You, you, how, how you speak about your father? I don't care what happened or what they did. How are you speaking about what happened? And this is the part that blew my mind, Rodney. I was cool with that he forgot all my troubles, but he said, and all my father's household. <laughs> this is going to be the one that's going to be hard for you. Joseph said, when I left home, and I left my father's house, I forgot about my father. I forgot about my brothers. I forgot about my brothers who tried to kill me. I forgot about them. The whole household, I forgot about them. Not in a negative way. I forgot about them because there's nothing I can do with them here when I'm not with them anymore. It must have been God's will that I'm no longer with my father, Jacob. It must be my father's will that I'm no longer with my, my little brother, Benjamin. It must be God's will. Must be God's will that I'm not with my mother no more. It must be God's will. And the problem with us is that we move on, but we're still holding on to stuff that we ain't even, it ain't even present no more. It ain't even in our lives no more. It don't even matter. But watch this. He did not hate them. Why? Because when he finally blew up and his family came, he took care of his family. But God says you can't take care. You, I, what you're going to be able to do for your family you can't do it being with your family. I'm just saying, God was like, what, I, what I'm about to call you to do, they ain't on that level. They're not going to understand. So what I need you to do is I need you to cut them off completely. And when I'm ready to bring them back, then you can bring them back because they back. But when they go, they gone. 
For some of y'all, that's your struggle. You, you, it's people that you, you, it's, it's loved ones like no harm, no foul. I have to just be like, yo, you dead to me. Period. You dead to me. Not that I got nothing against you, but I'm moving forward. You're going backwards. We're not going in the same direction. I can't go backwards with you because I love you. I'm not going backwards. I'm not on that. I'm, I'm trying to be a billionaire. I'm not on that. I'm trying to leave a legacy. I'm not mad that you where you at. Like I'm not, I'm not even bothered with where you are. I'm just not where you are. So I can't be where you are to be in a relationship with you. Joseph wasn't with his father. He was with Potiphar. He was with Pharaoh. <laughs> he was on a whole different level. He was Pharaoh's two man. And when it was time for his family to come, God brought his family. But before that, I'm telling you, Lisa, what the Bible said. He said, and he forgot his entire, the whole household. He forgot his father, all his father's kids, the religion, all of all of Israel, all of it was gone. He wasn't there. He was in Egypt. There are those of you who have been blessed to be in Egypt. You still in Israel. That's some of you, you married and you still holding on to a relationship. You wonder what's wrong with your marriage. You still in the last relationship. You ain't left it yet. You had left the scars of the last, you still thinking about it. You were, you were actually in Egypt, but you can't enjoy Egypt because you in Israel. Your heart is in Israel. Your spirit is in Israel. I tell kids all the time, I ain't got to prove nothing to you. It's a GD that show you I'm from Detroit. I ain't got to prove none of you. There's a birth certificate that says Chicago, South Sides. I ain't got to prove none of you. I know where I'm from. I ain't got to prove none of you, but I ain't Detroit no more. That was a season of my life. I ain't Chicago no more. That was a season of my life. I'm global. I ain't attached to no city. I'm Dubai. I'm Singapore. I'm Africa. I'm global. And if you can't deal with that, that's your problem. That ain't got nothing to do with me. I'm not telling you you can't be global, but you've decided that you don't want to be. You decided that this is where you want to be. That's cool. But don't get mad at me. God said, Kip. and Joseph got his whole father's whole household. It wasn't one of them he kept. He wasn't even bitching. His little brother that he loved. He, he didn't keep him in his heart. He like, that season is over. This is my season. And God blessed him with a wife. And God blessed him with kids. And God blessed him with a child. And because Joseph did what he was supposed to do, he actually put his family in a position where they didn't have to deal with the consequences that they had. His family should have died in the family too, Lisa. They should have died. They was in Israel. He brought his whole family over to Egypt and said, y'all can have whatever y'all want. I'll leave you with this. Joseph detached himself from his troubles, detached himself from all that God had detached him from, including his family. Your problem is you can't detach from what God has already detached you from. God already detached you from it. It ain't even a part of your life no more, but you're still holding on to it. I know it hurt, but it ain't. you ain't even living that reality no more. Ain't nobody even doing you like that no more, but you feel like it's being done to you. Why? Because everything that looks like... <laughs> That spirit that's inside of you. God is saying, today you got to do me a favor. I already blessed you. I already hooked you up. But that stuff is still in your spirit. And so we can't really move you to where you want to move you to. Because every time you see something, you think you see that. When that's not even, that ain't happened since 1978, 79. But it's all the way in 2023. Let's go back. Let's go back. I just want to show that one more time. This is it, y'all. It's the last one. And he never lost his love for his family. He lost his memories with them. It was as tough as though they had, it was though they had never existed until God permitted them to re-exist. I'm just saying, for those of you who are not happy, you're not where you want to be for that. Like, look, bump the religious stuff. I ain't on that. You don't want to go to church. You don't want to read your Bible. Love yourself enough for you, though, that if you're only going to be here a few years, that you get the best you could get out of it. 
I'm, I ain't tripping on religion. I'm tripping on you. You ain't happy, but you still running that same unhappy play. I've been there. Oh, my daddy wasn't in my life. God, like, how long you gonna run that play? You a grown man. And why you keep talking about who wasn't there? Start talking about who been there for you. Pastor Willis was there for you. Bob was there for you. Pastor Doggett was there for you. Let's talk about David Trophy was there for you. Let's talk about the people that was there for you. Why are you using that old language? Who wasn't there for you? I didn't put people in your life and you can't even get what you're supposed to get from them because you're so worried about who wasn't in your life and what so-and-so did. That bro, you grown. You ain't 12. I don't care if you had everything you were supposed to get. At about 18, you got to cut it off anyway, or it's unhealthy. You're 25 years old, still doing certain things to your mama. That's unhealthy, period. You grown now. Let's talk about what am I doing for you? Why you always want to talk about what you don't got? Let's talk about what you do have. Why are you always looking at the negative? Come on, son. Get over here. You got the lead at. I got you. I got you blessed. I'm blessed. We got 16 dog away. I'm blessed. We got take that. I'm blessed. I got folks watching. We go to Atlanta. It's packed. I'm blessed. People are, I, I, I can't believe the church. I'm like, I don't even see what you see, boo. <laughs> I don't even see that. I don't know what you're looking at. I don't see that. I see blessed. I don't know what you're looking at. <laughs> you might want to go outside. You might want to go in the house and wash your face and come back outside again. Watch your face. I don't know what you're seeing. I see blast. I see overflow. I'm looking at the bank statement. We made the one year we made this. The second year we made more. This year we making more than we made. I just, I just see blast. I'm baptizing people every time I go to Atlanta. I just see blast. Well, I don't see so and so. I'm gone. So, I'm done. I'm done. I'm not chasing so and so. I'm done. I'm working with who he is. I'm working with God's giving me. I ain't tripping on. I ain't running. I ain't chasing nobody. I'm moving forward. You can't walk with the footman. You definitely can't keep up with the horseman. By the way, Lisa, that's scripture. I'm not walking with the footman. I did that. I'm 52 years old. I don't got time for that. I'm, I'm on horses now. I'm loving it. <laughs> I'm on a horse. Like, oh, I like this. <laughs> Let's go. Hey, E, what? I, I can't, I can't do it. I can't keep, I can't go back. I already been there. I sang with Jamie saying, I'm never going back. I'm never going back. I'm not even going back for you. And I love you, but I ain't coming back to get you. I'm not coming back for you because if I come back for you, I might get caught. I might get stuck because I'm from where you from and I sin just like you said. I don't want to go back. I'm not doing this because I'm perfect. I've been there. I sinned before you sinned. And I got the rewards that come with it. I'm, I'm never going back. I ain't coming back, but I can tell you where you can learn to ride horses. <laughs> Tuesday at 4 a.m., they learn. <laughs> Lynn doing a horse, Lynn teaching folks Tuesday how to. <laughs> Wednesday, pastor preaching, you can figure out how to. Sabbath, we got. <laughs> Afterwards, we got Potla. <laughs> Sabbath morning, we got Alicia. <laughs> I can't end it. I can't go walk. I can't. We going walking though. I'm, I'm sorry. I can't go walking with you. I put up my walking shoes. I got my boots now. So if you want to stay in that, that world, stay in it. I'm not even judging you. I've been there. I just pray one day you get out of it because it's hard to get out once you get in. As I leave, stay in the pocket. Joseph stayed in the pocket. Hey Amen. I don't know who you are. Can you help me with this? I don't know who you are. Hey Amen. I don't know who you are. Hey Amen. I don't know who you are. If you're watching at home, go get you a trash can. Hey Amen. Go get you some paper. I don't know who you are. Yeah, I don't know who you are. Hey Amen. You're at home watching. You're in the sanctuary. 
I don't know who you are. I don't know what you heard in the sermon today, but whatever you heard, amen, is something, amen, that you're going you're gonna to stop preaching. Hallelujah. Praise God. You're about to symbolically let it go. Ball it up. Speak to it. Say goodbye. Do your little crying. You say, God, I'm about to let 1982 go once and for all. I'm letting 2000 go. 1974 has got to go. At your time, when you're ready to forget about all your troubles and forget everybody in your father's household that's appropriate, you take that piece of paper, talk to God, put it in the trash. It's your time. It's your time. It's your time. I'm done. I'll pray after everybody is finished. I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. Ball it up. Don't, don't tell your spouse. Don't ever remind your friend about it, your spouse about it, your kids about it, your church members about it. Don't ever bring it up again. Don't ever bring it up again. It's over. It's done. If something happens, speak about it as if it's happening right then. It's over. It's done. Don't bring it up again. Forget all your troubles. Forget all your troubles. They're done. They're done. Talk to God. Put them in the trash. Don't ever. They're done. Leave, leave them. Don't ever remind that person. Oh, you did this. You did that. You said this. You said that. It's done. It's done. It's over. Speak well of your parents. Speak well of your boss. Speak well of your church. Speak well. Hallelujah. Speak well. Hallelujah. Speak well. Hallelujah. For your own spiritual and emotional health, speak well of that person. Speak well. We're not talking about lying. We're not talking about lying or acting like you don't know. No, no. We're talking about forgetting. Speak well. This is mine. I'm going to take care of it. Hallelujah. Praise God. This is mine. God gave it to me, belonged to me. I'm going to speak well about it, treat it well. Hallelujah. Praise God. Speak well. Hallelujah. We're going to stop talking about it like that. You wonder why it's like that. Because you did that. Let it go. I don't care what it is. If it's gone, it's gone. And you had it for the time frame God wanted you to have it. So move on. And get what's next. Praise God. I want to say this to you in the spirit. I mean this with all my heart. Listen to me. Listen to me very carefully. Because God, he kept telling me this to tell you. And I actually forgot. He didn't want me to forget. Do me a favor. If you are not, if you feel like, God, I can't do this. This person is too abusive. This person is like, I can't deal with their whatever. Do me a favor. Cut them. But don't be going back and forth. Either cut them and let them go. But if you keep them, love them. And make it work. I'm going to say it one more time. I'm, I'm not telling you to hold on to something that you shouldn't hold on to. If you feel like, yo, I, 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 I can't do it, then don't do it. But stop going back and forth. Stop, stop doing it and then bringing up the past. Stop doing it and then talking to them like trying to make them feel. No, stop. Just stop talking about it. Like act like it never existed. They never existed. Let them go and move on with your life. But if you hold on to it. Don't ever talk about it bad. Don't ever treat it bad. If you're going to hold on to it, hold on to it. But if you like, man, I got to let it go and I got to move on because I can't keep doing it, then go, go. He said, Joseph forgot his trouble. He forgot some folk. Go. Don't, and don't feel bad about it. You did what you thought was right for you. But whatever you do, if you say yes to it, then just know the success of it is not going to come from some fantasy. The success is going to come from Joseph doing what he did. And saying, even in the midst of my troubles, I'm going to trust him 
that this thing is going to work out. And by the grace of God, he had grain that could not be measured. I don't know how a lot of other people that can say that in the word. And so, Father, we come now in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you. There's some stuff we need to get out of our spirits today. For once and for all, it just, it, it shouldn't even been there rent free. It shouldn't have been there all these years. We apologize. But once and for all, it's out of our spirits now and it's into your hands. We cast those spirits out of that pig and they said, where are we going to go? Lord, we don't care. But cast those spirits out of fear, of anger, of hurt, revenge, depression, anxiety, stress, and worry. You've not given us those spirits. They shouldn't be inside of us. It doesn't mean we won't be tempted. It don't mean, it don't mean we won't have some weight. But the sins, Lord, the things that are deep down within, we ready to let those things go, Father. We know we, we on planet Earth. We're not in heaven yet. So we may be sold into slavery. It's real. We may be turned into slavery. We, it's real. We may, we may be lied on. We may be thrown in prison. It's real. There may be some stuff that's, that happens. It's Earth. But from this day forward, we're not going to come out of love, power, and a sound mind, Lord. We're not going to be going back and forth in the spirit, out the spirit, in the flesh, out the spirit, in the spirit, in the flesh. Lord, we make a commitment today like Joseph. An example in the word that no matter what happens, we can still be in the spirit and get the things that come from being in the spirit. And we love each other, Lord, and not be each other's enemy. And we not attack each other, Lord, but lift each other up. We do know, Lord, there is a healthy place for correction, correction and instruction. And we receive that correction and that instruction. But the spirit of the devil, and we never mix the two. May we never mix your spirit and the enemy spirit together. But may we keep your spirit in everything we say and do, in every relationship, in every situation. Because we know if we lean not into our own understanding, but acknowledge you in all our ways, you shall surely direct our path and you shall surely bless us. We thank you. We praise you. We worship you. We honor you. We adore you. We lift you up. We magnify your name. And we just ask in a special way that you would forgive us for our sins and that you would save us and keep us in your son's precious name. Amen. Thank you so much for joining us this week. For those who have expressed an interest in supporting our ministry, please use our cash app, dollar sign, a place of change, APOC, for your donations and tithes. If you prefer more traditional options, please visit our website at www.apocministry.org where you can make your donation via PayPal, credit card, or certified check or money order. We look forward to seeing all of you for our midweek service Wednesday evenings at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time with Pastor T.J. Tyus. On behalf of our pastors and their families and your APOC family, we wish you all a very blessed week. Hey there, welcome to my channel, Fresh Personal Growth Motivation. Today I speak. Today I speak trust in God. Trust in God through suffering. <clears throat> I just need impressed cause you got dressed and you came here. He is not impressed, not excited about he packed hairs. And the phrase and you supposed to get and when you have you are brand new change that catalytic 
and did not accept when just let them see the car i have never somebody i try to make it plain i have never take my car they can they already built every time it takes wrong and need them fix who you are he made you are going to god because something ain't working and something ain't all right and i need help you fix it promise ready for you get on the road